likely to enable Israel to focus more closely on the conflict in Gaza. Uh, we know it has vowed to destroy its long-time enemy, the Palestinian Islamist group, uh, which led to October 7, 2023 attacks on Israeli communities and, and garnered uh -huh. international headlines. Thank you, Satil, for asking that. I think Israel had announced that it wants to eliminate uh, Hamas from the very roots. Uh, it has actually eliminated much of the population from that part. Uh, but when it comes to Hezbollah, interesting it is that the national security minister who is threatening to resign and take away his coalition ministers away from the government is actually saying that Israel in case of southern Lebanon is in stronger position and should not make a ceasefire at this stage and should really defeat Hezbollah now. And in that sense, uh, they have a very different imagination of what they're doing with. And Hezbollah is saying we are agreeing to ceasefire so that ceasefire in Gaza can also be initiated. So there's a kind of a indirect uh, precondition which is being sort of attached from that, that Hezbollah side here. But, you know, we are all saying at least in this desperate situation, any good sign is something to celebrate. And therefore, ceasefire is something which is a good sign. But we have to be aware that there are going to be constant challenges that whether this ceasefire will exist, survive, thrive and get uh, peace between Lebanon and uh, Israel and whether it will lead to any peace vis-a-vis uh, -vis Gaza. There is no mention of Gaza at this stage. So we hope uh, that uh, it makes Israel now comfortable having virtually decimated much of Palestinians there mm. to think of some kind of ceasefire. But then ceasefire with who? Hamas doesn't exist according to Israel now. Hmm. Uh, Ambassador Bhattacharya, so, France, Professor Singh, uh, your take? Uh, I agree with the Ambassador, uh, given that the hopeless situation that has continued for over 15 or 14 months, uh, any such uh, indication of a ceasefire is a positive sign uh, and therefore is drawing a, a lot of uh, welcome remarks from the uh, world over. India has also welcomed it. Uh, United States uh, taking lead is also a good uh, sign because United States is a primary actor, uh, a major influence in the way uh, Israel has conducted this conflict both in Gaza and in Lebanon. Uh, but remember that this is a ceasefire which is already having reports of violations. Hmm. Uh, so one has to be a little cautious. It talks of 60 days. Uh, and of course, we know there is a caretaker government in Lebanon. There is a great opposition inside Netanyahu's government. National Security Minister is threatening that his party will withdraw from the Congress. Right. From the so in that sense, if you compare to the 2006 ceasefire with the Hezbollah in Lebanon, mm -hmm. uh, where again the same exercise of uh, Lebanese forces occupying space uh, closer to the border was agreed upon but of course uh, Hezbollah came in better and as ambassador said you know only about seven uh, 3700 plus people have died in this particular conflict 50,000 people have died in Gaza and that ceasefire does not even okay. touch about the in, oh, uh, as a major achievement at least they are claiming to be for the U.S. Uh, in the waning days of uh, President Joe Biden administration, and there is already this talk about Gaza next. Your take? Uh, I fully agree with you in that uh, lame duck presidency of uh, Joe Biden. This can be seen as a clincher, and he's saying that this will be carried forward even for the Palestinians, uh, whether it happens within next uh, seven weeks when he's the president or uh, will happen during Donald Trump's presidency is yet to be seen. But yes, it's a clincher. Uh, and that was possible, as I said, because United States has been the primary influence uh, the way Netanyahu has carried out uh, this uh, constant uh, onslaught on both Gaza and in southern Lebanon. Uh, but we were all seeing that Netanyahu was hardly listening to uh, American presidents. Uh, but it seems that if there was any influence, of course, France and particularly United States were influenced. But there are a lot of hiccups, interpretations are different and the core problem in interpretation of what is agreed upon right now is this. Israel believes that in case United Nations interim forces in Lebanon, mm -hmm. UNIFIL along with the Lebanese armed forces is not able to ensure that the ceasefire is implemented in, in, in spirit and word as Israel will interpret it. Israel will have right to go and intervene once again, which is not acceptable to Hezbollah. Okay. So there's 
already a, a, a difference in interpretation. Second, while they were preparing for the ceasefire agreement, uh, Israelis have uh, really had enormous onslaughts on uh, the southern Lebanon, including parts of Beirut, uh, you know, flattening lots of these structures. So even if people want to come back, I'm not sure where they are going to come back in that sense. Right. And the then old story of 2006, Hezbollah, you know, will survive only if it stands as a force against Israel. If it moves north of the river, then it will have to find a political role in domestic politics of Lebanon, which is not how, how Hezbollah has survived and will survive. So sooner or later, Hezbollah will have to come again to the border of uh, Israel. Okay. To as a force against okay, against all right. Israel. Right. So, a lot of hiccups as of now. Right, sir. So, um, as ambassador.